Moshi Moshi, my gamers, and welcome back to Genshi Impact. The flower of the clan's flying child has officially started, but a stalking sideways those at the site. The flower feather clan should be about ready to hold the new flying child by now. Let's go check it out! Oh, yeah, look at those birds! They're all around already. Okay, so will it be Chasa doing the child thing or a watching people <laughs> doing with stuff? Traveler in Paimon. You came. Yep, and it looks like we made it just in time! Although, can't say the same for the Cuckoosaurs. Bit of a low turnout, huh? Yeah, you'll see why soon enough. Alright, get ready. Three, two, one, fly! Oh, oh no, we're in jetpacks? Whoa! We're really flying! The way in jetpacks? They got jetpacks in Genshin, that's interesting. People are gonna hear it because they're like, It's not fantasy! Have you not played Within Waves or any other games that has this? Oi, what about anime? They had those too. I feel light as a feather. <laughs> I'm flying without a Kukasaur. These flutistic wings are awesome. What the? What's going on? Paimon can barely believe her eyes. How did they fly all on their own? What happened while we were gone? The merchants we ran into that day were selling a product called Phlogiston Wings. <coughs> oh, that makes sense. It's worn on the back. To operate it, you just use a handheld trackball that controls the flow of gaseous phlogiston. That's incredible! Yeah. If our tribe, well, if Natlan mass adopted this technology, it would revolutionize our mobility and responsiveness in times of crisis. Just think of the countless tragedies that could be averted. I, I feel like I'm dreaming. <laughs> Did I really just fly on my own without the help of a Kukasaur? You'd better believe it! Plus, you just passed a flying trial! Uh, right, Elder Alpa? Mm. I don't think so yet. Uh, Elder Alpa? Um, should this really count as a pass if we did the trial using phlogiston wings? Why not? The scoring rubric is about flying performance. It doesn't specifically say you have to ride a Kukasaur, does it? Um, you yeah, may be, but... I mean, even Chaska had to ride a Kukasaur in a trial, right? Made. And the whole point of the trial is to test both your flying technique and your ability to work with a Saurian companion. Well, if we can fly by ourselves, maybe we don't need to test the ladder That's anymore. Stupid. What? Do are you sure about that? Chaska, Traveler, down. what are your thoughts on this new invention? Hmm. Hmm. It's an unknown quantity. You should use it with caution. Right. That's what I think too. Hmm. I want to say top caution either. That they have strategic value, but I don't think it makes any sense to evaluate candidates by the current testing standards if they're using phlogiston wings. <laughs> oh, <laughs> why? Shunan finally mustered the courage to go through with this, and now you're thing. saying it doesn't you're count? I don't have any experience using these wings in battle. Nor is it immediately obvious how to incorporate them into the existing systems in our tribe. Taking a longer-term perspective, I think we need to start by getting thoroughly acquainted with how these things work. Then we can develop a new trial format with new assessment criteria, tailored to candidates using the phlogiston wings. Hmm. You all raise valid points. But Chaska, while your proposal sounds perfectly reasonable, it would probably take years to put it into practice. We lost so many people in that war. These phlogiston wings could be exactly what we need to strengthen our forces and boost morale in this trying time. And as for real-world battle experience, there will be plenty of opportunities to gain that. I have high hopes for you, Junon. Huh? Hey, stop staring into space! Say thank you! Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Elder Alpa! You have Just nothing still. to thank me for. Remember, the way you got your wings back was by relying on yourself. Oh, Elder Alba! Bad news! Kukasaurs are attacking the merchants again! <laughs> again? Again? Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying! Stay put while I. Mm -hmm. Huh? Chaska? Like, Aether! Paimon, get your ass over here! Act 3, okay, okay, we get it. The physical is. Hey! 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 Hey!
Will you stare at her ass? I mean, I get her ass is amazing to look at, but we need to focus. Okay, what's going on? We're here. You can see on the edge of the bed. You're not thinking straight, dude. They probably oh, know something. It's but... back. It found us again. I think they know something. Run, get out of here. <laughs> they probably know something, the animals. Curses. She's really riled up this time. Hey, stop running. We'll never outrun a creature with wings. Get back here and let's fight. Stop, all of you. Ooh, she just landed just in time. And I came up with two. Jessica! Oh, wonderful. Quick, get rid of that thing. The stain on our us. Oh, she sounds flustered. She's like, God damn. I can't stop staring. Stop looking! Focus! Uh, what's going on? Why isn't she doing anything? So it really is you. Sister. Wait, sister? So that Kukusur is Chaska's sister? We call it as a bird? How is that possible? They probably should know that these guys are no good, sister! Koya, wait! Uh-oh. Is Chaska uh... gonna be okay? Should we go check on her? Wait, how do these guys get here too? I mean, they're probably dead anyways. Anyways, Jessica, you okay, girl? You probably need a hug like, my whole sister! <laughs> Chaska? Are you okay? <sighs> I'm fine. Sorry for making you worry. You're not gonna keep. You're not going to keep following her. <laughs> no point. She's an expert at hiding her tracks. Once she's shaken you off, you'll never catch up to her. At least I always used to lose to her at hide and seek when we were kids. When you were kids. Oh well, yeah. You know I was raised by Kukasaurus. Anyway, I don't remember, actually, she and I grew up in the nest happened, together. Happened, her name's Koya, and she's my big sister. We played together all the time chasing each other through treetops or mountaintops. It felt like it would go on that way forever. Until the day I was sent back to live with the humans. Not all Kukasaurs are friendly towards people. Koya, for instance, she's fine with me because we grew up around each other, but she's not fond of other humans. When mom decided to send me away, Koya strongly protested and after I left, she became more and more reluctant to interact with humans. Maybe she thinks that Humans stole you away from her. It's a possibility, but in any case, we still stayed best friends at first. I had a hard time adjusting to life in the tribe. So whenever something went wrong, I'd run off into the so wild and vent to Koya. Ah, so that's what Uncle Cusco was talking about. He said you seemed to prefer hanging out with Saurians to your own kind back then. Yeah, I did. But then, gradually, everything changed. With a new mom and dad, a new tribe, and Koichi, I started getting curious about these humans and made an effort to understand their behavior. The more time I spent with them, the less I spent with Koya. And then, one day, it was Koya's turn to leave the nest. She sought me out and asked if I was willing to leave the tribe and go live in the wilderness with her. As far as I can remember, that was the first time she ever approached a human settlement on purpose. So, how did you answer her? Well, I wouldn't Wait be standing me. here talking to Wait you if me. I'd said yes. In other words, you turned her down? No, I... I was torn. On the one hand, I'd already made up my mind to embrace my new family and accept my human identity. But I also knew that Koya wasn't a fan of humans and I didn't want to disappoint her. She took my hesitation as an answer. She saw it as a personal betrayal, threw a huge fit, and then flew off. We hadn't seen each other since, well, until today. Not for a lack of trying, though. I tried asking Mom where Koya's new nest was so I could talk things out with her. But Koya had already asked Mom not to tell me where she'd moved to. It must be hard for Mom, being stuck between her two daughters. So I didn't press the issue. And... I didn't go looking for her. But after today's events? Mm, if things carry on like this, I need to make sure I find her before anyone else. Even if she doesn't want to see me. 
For now, let's bring the wounded back to the tribe and see what Mutota and Elder Alba have in mind. You yeah, listen to the ghost to over there. Never mind, back to the tribe that's so far away. <laughs> I flew to the tribe, I'm here. Hey, oh, hope I don't fall down. At the train to the wounded, but to get everything to So, uh, I hear there's been another Kukasaur attack. Ha! I knew it! They're wild animals, and they can't be trusted. Hey, show a little respect. The Kukasaurs are our partners. <laughs> Maybe in the flying squad, but they don't give a hoot about the rest of us. Well, now that we have the Phlogiston oh, wings, so do we even need the Kukasaurs anymore? Are you kidding? How are we supposed to protect our tribe without them? I, uh, I didn't mean it like that. Huh? Protect our tribe? Or are you just scared that your precious flying squad will lose its prestigious position? You take that back! <sighs> Things are changing so quickly. Tasca, there's a conflict emerging there. Aren't you going to nip it in the bud? <laughs> the whole tribe's talking about this now. Breaking up a single fight won't solve anything. The real source of conflict here is the phlogiston wings. And what happened with Koya? On any other day, people would just brush this attack aside. After all, clashes between wild kookasaurs and humans are no more common than those between people. But now that the phlogisting wings have entered the equation, it's sparked a debate over whether our tribe needs the kookasaurs at all. I worry that we risk repeating the mistakes of the Cinder City. Back then, Lord Ochkan's hatred of the Saurians nearly destroyed the peace forged by the pyro Archon, Chaska. To prevent things from deteriorating further, I'd like to task you with restoring peace to the tribe. I will. Traveler, you've already done so much for Natlan, and the Flower Feather Clan has no right to ask more of you. But say no more, I mean. <clears throat> the child, the Flower Feather Tribe, are my friends. <laughs> Looks like I was making a mountain out of a molehill. And don't forget about Paimon. Just leave this to us. <sighs> this whole situation has unfolded so quickly that it's put us on a back foot. To tell the truth. It makes me a little suspicious. You think someone might have orchestrated all this? It's possible. Leave it with me. I'll look into it. Also, Chaska, could you try to keep a low profile while you're out there digging around? We don't want to give our hand away. I'll do my best. Yeah, be careful. Okay, so where should we start? This all began with Koya's attacks. If we can find out what led her to do it, that should give us something to work with. But will she even talk to us? Unlikely. Given how she reacted when I showed up, I don't think she's forgiven me. If you want to resolve a conflict through dialogue, sometimes you need a third party facilitator. Let's go see my mom. Oh my god, you gonna speak some Pokemon languages with us? So, out of all the places around here, apparently, I'm gonna fly so fast! <laughs> Flying as Chaska is the best thing in the game! Woohoo! Get some energy up there, and then I have to keep going until one's out. Damn, look at this! We're flying around! Uh oh, engine better run out. Hey! Flip, 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 and go fast! Woohoo! Am I gonna make it? How much of tough if I don't make it? Eh, grab it, Chaska, in time, come on! Oh my goodness, we did just in time. Ooh, hoo, hoo, damn. So, this is the nest over here? Seriously? Okay, we're here. Oh, underground, not above. Okay. Wow, so this is where you used to live as a child? Mm hmm. When I was little, we used to do this thing where I'd jump from the top of this tree, and Koya would fly over from the platform and catch me in midair. Or sometimes we'd both fly from the treetop together and then after some aerial maneuvering, she'd throw me up onto that platform. And after we got a bit older, we went to the nearby shores looking for even greater heights. Stop! You're gonna get Paimon a heart attack! Oh really? Mine just thought it made a fun story. I liked it. Then I'll share more with you when there's time. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Ooh, awesome. 
And that's the mom it looks like? Okay. He's like, oh, like Joshka? Like Joshka? Hey, Mama Bird. I'm back. My last visit was only a week ago, wasn't it? See? I visit you more than I visit Papa Cusco. I brought a couple of friends with me. These are the Traveler and Paimon. Traveler, Paimon. This is my mom. Her name is Chimpu. In the human tongue, anyway. So, oh, is that your boyfriend you're telling me about all? Uh, hi. Do you understand Silla language? No, not really. I don't speak it as such, but I can sort of get the gist. Although only with Mom and Koya, since I spent my formative years with them. Even then, it's basically a best guess based on their sounds, body language, and expressions. Seems to work about nine times out of ten, anyway. As for whether Mom understands me, I can't always tell. But somehow we still manage to communicate. Call it the family bond, I guess. Don't worry. I'm doing well, but I think Koya might be in some trouble. Chaska's been considering to Chimpa through the series of gestures. I know she's never been a fan of humans, but she's never deliberately attacked them before either. What's behind this sudden change? Does, um, Auntie Chimpu know anything? Doesn't look like it. Koya hasn't visited her in a long time. Then, could you please tell me where she's living nowadays? I really need to talk to her. If this animosity between her and the tribe continues, then... The next time there's an incident, I don't know if I'll make it there in time. What did she say? She said she'll take us there. Thank you, Mom. Oh, really? Alright, so where's the... Ne oh my god, so far away! Where is... Oh, it's just right there. It's right there. Time to fly! Woohoo! My goodness, hopefully I can touch down in time. I'm like so close! No! Oh, never mind. Just in time? Did I touch it up? Come on, I need to get up here. Did I saw it somewhere? Yeah. Eh, it's a matter. I'm just gonna follow it anyways. Weehoo! Ooh, there's another one. Hold up, save some energy. There you go, I touched it! Yeah, touch it, touch it, touch it. So there she is, this right here. Always whistling with her weapons. This is a really remote location! Cause she was trying to get as far away from humans as possible! It's like, yeah, no! We stay here? Hmm. Okay. Got it. Traveler. Where did he play? Paimon. Eh? Mom says we should stay out of sight for now. She'll talk to Koya first. Koya is very hostile toward humans right now. So if we show up unannounced, it might just make things worse. Got it. So am I like next to her while she talks to Mama? I mean, daughter? There she is. Like, should they listen to me? Like, Mama! I said, I bought my daughter, so I need you to listen to me, you uh, sweetie. Okay, well, Any idea what they're saying? I'm just guessing. I have no hmm. idea what they're saying. Sounds like things are more complicated than I imagined. There's evidence in this area suggesting that Koya might have been... The victim of a human attack. What? That's allowed. That is your by my spy guide. No! What the fuck you mean? No. What's one? It's Chime, Koya's child. The attackers kidnapped her. They came over the sea, under the cover of night, and they took Chime. What the heck? Who would do such a thing? I, don't I searched know. day and night, and finally found them. Will she say them? Oh lord, another one. Duck! Oh yeah! Tipal's contraption is working like a charm! Oh, the sus! I knew it! You don't trust these guys. Hey, there's another one! Wait, is that the one that got away last time? Who cares? Just <gasps> get them all! Tipal pays us per catch! What? I had to! I had to! Poor Cash. <laughs> Jessica! Go in! Jessica! Yep. Jessica? How do you get here? How did I get here? Quick, stop her! Make this motherfuckers wet! Don't you even think about running away! And then. Oh. Never mind. I was about to turn to Chester to 
shotgun their heads. Don't don't come any closer, or I'll uh, go phlogiston wings. Take me out of here. Uh -oh, what looks the? Like it Why does that have a Pokemon face for a second? This is bad. Mom and Koya are already injured. And if that thing explodes right next to them... Help! The elemental energy suppresses it! Please, someone! Get back! That's not what we're thinking. <laughs> Use her wings. Oh, it's still going! And it's getting worse! Guess we need a more permanent solution. Alright then. <gasps> Is this a common color style I'm looking at? I actually like that. Chaka does the muffin jump into the distance moments later, he was supposed to be going out the ocean. That was too close. I thought I was gonna die. That can still be arranged. Did I just say that? I got a motherfucker of him? Answer us honestly. Were you the ones who attacked Koya before? I am. No, it was. It was. Like you, motherfucker! Well, she says it was you. We have other ways of making you talk. Just tell me, who sent you here? I, I... It was to Paul. He told us to catch all the wild kookasaurs we can find. And uh, he also said that this kookasaur has become a thorn in his side, so he needs dealing with urgently. To Paul? Huh. Sounds familiar. But where from? So where is he now? Uh... Boy, uh, he tends to send his orders in writing. Uh oh. He pretty much never communicates with us in person. When he does, he wears a mask to hide his face. And whenever we trade Kukasaurs for phlogiston wings, we deal with his henchmen. Oh boy. Like so that? you didn't even make those wings? All we did was slap some labels on them and transport them over here uh, to make them look like they're reported. To make it harder to trace their origins. What does he what wants you to cast a Kukasaurus? <laughs> I don't know. Honest! Well, that's mighty convenient, huh? What about if I held a gun to your head? Would that change your answer? Oh, the big gun! No, no need. I'm sorry. I'll tell you everything I know. T'Pol doesn't tell us much. But he always stresses that he wants them alive. So that gives us some clues. This is just a best guess, of course. But we suspect that the gaseous phlogiston stored in the trackballs is drawn directly from the kookasaurs. What? Are you done what with us? Easy. You're still injured. Hey, keep talking. Yes, ma'am. So... The gaseous phlogiston has to be highly refined in order to power the phlogiston wings. The slightest imperfection can have disastrous consequences, as you just witnessed. But the kookasaurs have a natural ability to process gaseous phlogiston. So, if you use them as an intermediary... He's a god, shut up, I want you dead! That's enough. So the kookasaurs you took, where are they now? Uh... Paul should have them. But no one knows where he's based, apart from him and his henchmen. We've tried looking for it ourselves, even followed them a few times. But we always end up losing track of them. Um, random thought. Maybe they're hiding up in the sky? I guess that means we can't go after the wide leaders yet. T'Pol. T'Pol. I'm sure I've heard that name. Maybe it was... Jaska, Traveler. Oh, Paul? Oh, did you follow us here? That voice! It's Opa! Elder Opa? What brings you all the way out here? Well, I was patrolling nearby when I heard the sound of an explosion. What's going on? Let me fill you in. He explained to us seems to Alpha. Like this asshole did this! I don't believe it. Elder Alba, does the name to Paul ring a bell to you? I feel like I've seen it written down before. Maybe in a list of candidates for the flying trials? Huh? So he's a member of your tribe then? No. If he was a member of the Flower Feather Clan, I definitely know him. Shall we head back to the tribe and do some investigation? <sighs> now that you mention it. I do remember a young man from outside our tribe who came to participate in our flying trials once. You were away on a mission at the time. 
Which is probably why you don't remember him. He was a craftsman from the Children of Echoes, but he'd always dreamed of soaring the skies. So he wanted to join our flying squad. The Children of Echoes? That's rare. But despite his best efforts, he unfortunately failed to pass the trial and gain the Kukusaur's approval. In the end, he went wingless and returned dejected to the Children of Echoes. Wingless, huh? Maybe he invented the phlogiston wings to get revenge on the Kukusaurs. Perhaps. Or maybe it's simply his way of dealing with his regrets over his past flying endeavors. Either way, it doesn't excuse his abuse of the Kukusaurs. I'm gonna take these guys back and expose the truth to the tribe. It's time for this conflict to end. <laughs> Easy, Chaska. Remember what I said about keeping a low profile? The ringleader still hasn't shown himself, and this man's allegation about powering the phlogiston wings with Kukusaurs is only speculation. Bringing these men to the trial yeah. won't win over any current supporters of the phlogiston wings. In fact, it may even escalate the conflict further. After all, Many are mistrustful of the Kukusaurs after recent events. Is that why T'Pol yeah. waited until now to try to capture my sister? I... I don't know. I mean, he did tell us to spread negative rumors about the Kukusaurs and slip some mora to anyone opposed to them, but... But Koya only attacked humans because they stole her child! Nevertheless, we will be hard-pressed to change people's minds while emotions are running high. Unless we have irrefutable evidence. You may need to catch Tep off himself. Bravo! My thoughts exactly. Oh yeah. In the meantime, leave these men with me. I'll escort them back to the tribe. I'll take the other members of their crew into custody too. They won't get another chance to stir up trouble. Fair enough. I guess finding Tepal is gonna be the key to resolving this conflict. Let's hope the children of Echoes have some info on them. <gasps> Shiloni and Kachina being the two? Sorry, whatever it is. It'll have to wait till this is all blown over. I have to fix this situation before it spirals out of control. Mom, sis, rest up and get well soon. I gotta fly. Like, what's your gun? Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I just might be having like touching your ass cheeks. I mean, uh, never mind. Everyone's still probably leaving. Only Temple and Chiska. Just talking. Oh, we got here, follow her! Don't worry about me, mom can take care of herself. Got it, Bob! Oh. Okay, at least they show that they could communicate, though. I want to see that, actually, but I think, yes. I am fly! Wait! Alright. So, why are we here, though? This is not Echoes, this is like something else. Alpha says that Depaul's from the Children of Echoes. Not like that, Paimon. Let's start by talking to someone we know. It'll be faster that way. At this time and place, I'll bet the easiest person to find is... Shiloni. Wakey, wakey, Shilonin! Wait, oh, I knew it! Is she up there? <gasps> oh, it's you. Oh my god! <sighs> okay, give me a second. I'll come down. And she, she's like, ah! I'm like, ow, my back! <laughs> oh my god, the grip us <laughs> up close again. What the fuck? <sighs> Seems like you two both love climbing trees. <laughs> I climb trees to fly further and see farther. I don't usually stop for a nap. Well, we're not all like you. Always full of energy, even after flying around all day. Yeah. So, uh, you've come all this way and interrupted my precious nap time. Might I inquire as to, uh, what- I'm sorry, Shilonan, but it couldn't wait. Does the name Tapal mean anything to you? He's a craftsman, apparently. Huh. To Paul. Yeah, that rings a bell. I think that's Puma's child. Is he in the child right now? Nope. I'm afraid you're a few years too late. Um, why are you looking for him? It's a long story. She tries to explain what happened simply and briefly. She goes, oh, fuck, really? Huh. Just in wings. Wow, okay. <laughs> the kid actually pulled it off. Well, looks like uh, no more rest for me today. Pulls it off? You mean he's tried making something like this before? Yeah, he started trying to build a flying machine right after he got back from the Flower Feather Clan. So right after he went wingless then. Was this flying machine anything like the gun you made me? You mean your gun that's harder to tame than the proudest Kukasaur? 
No, he wanted to build something that allowed anyone to fly freely, even if they're not naturally gifted. Are you telling me she made everyone for all the characters? Oh wow, I actually love that then. But he never got very far back then, though. Blew up his workshop a few times and barely made it out alive. I never really kept up with him after that. His parents traveled a lot in their youth and only returned to the tribe after he was born. But they settled in a remote area and don't interact with other people much. Which means most people in the tribe don't know them very well. Your best bet is to chat to his direct family. I'll uh, go get Puma. Wait for me in front of the workshop. I won't be long. Puma? I mean, okay, guess we're going over there. Watch us over there. Weehoo! Fly to the tribe! Here we go now. I show about later at Shaloni's workshop. I'm back. Allow me to introduce to Paul's mother, Puma. Hello, Pierre! Oh, save the pleasantries. I don't want to spend any longer talking about that boy than I have to. Uh, huh? I disowned him long ago. He is no child of mine. All he cared about was his pipe dream of reaching the sky. Oh, we tried to talk sense into him, but he was obsessed. <laughs> And then when he left us, he spouted some nonsense about building a workshop in the sky to avoid the constant criticism of us ground dwellers. Guess what about that part? <laughs> Being above. He left his notebook behind. Whatever questions you have, you can look for them in there. I am done talking about him. He's no son of mine. He never called me mom anyhow. That's actually sad. Hmm. She's like, God damn. Wow, they've really fallen out. I'm not sure I wasn't expecting that. I was like, is it just me? But then she just became a, a, a pussy for a while. Her husband, Tapal's father, uh, he passed away recently, and Tapal didn't even bother to show his face at the funeral. If that she hurts. That was probably the final straw for Puma. I'll go keep yep. her company. If there's anything else you need, just come and find me. Thank you. Okay, so this notebook is the only lead we got now, right? What's in there? I'm gonna look. It looks like I am gonna look into. Ooh, look at the top page. That's what he made, apparently? Wait, I think I seen that like in the last episode. That's possible. Log number 97. The experience was a failure. I expected. The tendency of Okoro land, the Cinder City, is not easy to replied. The flowing device, briefly on the relic supports, fell quickly. Is that a power output issue or a weight issue? It seems that they have relied on Okoro obtaining from Cinder City for the time being. Log number 120. Those blasted, bursted boys. How dare they question my ideas? It's just a few smash workshops if we cannot if we take such a miserable risk how can they even surprise our predecessors hmm whatever the level remains within my possession as long as i continue my research i will surely make progress log number 133 even father and Puma refuse to disappoint me now put up to it by those very in the tribe i'm sure hmm but so what so what if no one is the world supposed to be i have my own ways it's time to leave this place my dream is the other sky itself hmm some early designs for the phlogiston wings and some theorizing about an airborne workshop, Ochkanatlan, the Cinder City. Looks like that's where he got his technological inspiration from. So, was he serious about the workshop in the sky? But that's such a big project for one person. Do we think he actually pulled it off? Haven't we seen that summer before? That's what I'm saying! Oh, yes! The one from the trial arena that was super high up! That balloon has been there for a while, and everyone's been wondering how it got up there, but... What if that's the wrong question? What if it started off even higher up, above the clouds and out of view? Why? So stupid. And it only descended to its current height due to some kind of malfunction. In other words, it could be... Part of T'Pol's workshop? Seems likely. If T'Pol's base had been hiding above the clouds this whole time, that would definitely explain why Isidor couldn't find it. <laughs> By myself? Possibly. But with a passenger, no chance. Oh man, I can be that heavy. I mean, I think you're heavier. I doubt even phlogiston wings could take you up that high. At least, not without that relic DePaul mentioned in his notebook. Yeah, and he's probably holding on to it. We'll have to find another way. Can you fly up that high? I don't think she could! Uh, nope. That's way beyond Paimon's altitude. She'll be able to claim it either, like Tails. expect Paimon to go up there and take on DePaul by herself? Let's not worry. Just because we can't think of a solution doesn't mean no one else can. 
I'm not the only flying expert in my tribe, you know. Nope. Oh, good point. We should go ask Elder Opa. And Mutoda. He was quite the flying ace back in the day, too. Let's head back and see what they suggest. Oh, uh, walking while talking with her. And, oh yeah, I forgot. I remember Napicha, like, she now works with Shinoi now. That's so wholesome now. Hold up, let's go talk to her quick before we go. Hmm? What classes do I have today? Classes? Um, about the future. I, I want to be the negative too, to Shinoni. Do I still care about all this book? I'm glad that I was scared of fucking this. I'll do this, my club. I'll be super powerful. At least I don't want anyone to keep you worried about me. Huh. Oh, let's go talk to her real quick before we go. Hmm, how's the uh, sleuthing going? Well, good for now. How is the puma doing? Uh, hanging in there. She seems to have calmed down now. I'll check in with her again later. I think something about handing you that notebook meant she was finally able to let go of a few things. So maybe this was for the best. Mm -hmm. Don't give you a hug and say goodbye. I mean goodbye. I must see you later. All right, tribal chief of the wing clan. Let me, let me get down. Let me get down. Okay, now let's talk to them. Oh, wait. Chaska, you're finally back. Things are getting really tense in the tribe. Have you made any headway with your investigation? Some people even think we arrested the merchants just to support the flying squad and crack down on the phlogiston wings. Hmm, maybe the other parties out there fell in the flames too? We found some promising leads. But there's a major obstacle standing between us and the irrefutable evidence we need. You asking us what you found about Telpa and your theory about the airborne. A relic from the Cinder City? <sighs> so Ochkan's still managing to sow discord, even after all these years. An airborne workshop and a hot air balloon above the trial arena. And that's where you're trying to get to now? Yeah, that's how we get up there. Neither phlogiston wings nor a kukusaur can take you that high up. Do you really think that's where Topal is hiding? You know what? There might just be a way. Really? Do you still remember those spouts in the arena? When they were all blocked, the gaseous phlogiston was trapped and unable to flow. But now, it's flowing freely. If we were to block them up again... You mean, all of them except the one at the very top of the arena? To build up the pressure there? Precisely. With all the gaseous phlogiston flowing through one spout, it would create a high-pressure wind current. And then we just ride it up into the sky! Yes, it has its risks, but with Chaska's abilities, I think she could manage it. It's an extremely risky approach, but I agree that it's feasible. If you want to give it a try, check with Inkanak at the trial grounds. She can explain how to block the spouts, Chaska. If anyone has a hope of seizing this evidence from the high heavens, it is you. Oh yeah, so we're going. Looks like we are. Oh my god, your argument is left and right. That's crazy. Okay, it's not gonna follow we're going through, so I'm gonna fly down very quickly. And go down. Whee hoo! Oh wait, touch down and we'll talk to you. Alright, let's speak. You heard to try to explain something to Inkali. Goodness me, that is a very bold idea. Maybe so, but we have to act fast. What's the quickest way for us to block off the spouts? Uh, from a technical perspective, I'd have to advise taking some measurements and carefully planning this out first. But I'm guessing that's not what you want to hear. Yeah. Then we'll have to take the rough and ready approach. See the solid phlogiston over there? Our prior inspections revealed that some kind of stable structure has formed inside making it highly damage resistant. It's not without its weak points, but unless they're all struck at the same time, the structural integrity won't be threatened. So what happens if we do strike them all at once? It'll collapse. Okay, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, you got it. As long as you hit all the weak spots at once from the right angle, the solid phlogiston will fall right on top of the spout and block it up. You're right about rough and ready. Sounds like my kind of plan. She said, well, wait, hold up. Do you mean by. <laughs> you actually dick by sewing that above? Damn, girl. I'll say stuff from the above point and then below. I will do that first. So, damage for Chaska. She'll have to Look, do her ability. Right oh, that's one. One down. Next. Oh, I, I should have been closer. Not too far away. Aiming carefully. Beautiful. Okay, you gotta get down because you're about to run out of energy. Actually, never mind. Look, it just 
got this part up. Gotta do it the right way, like she said. I can go down apparently. Down, go down. Now do this. Oh my god, that's beautiful. Wait, I thought I. Oh, wait, what? So, that wasn't enough. Are you kidding? Are you serious, man? Are you kidding? Okay, let me just go back up. And then, do I fly? Yeah, thanks, guys. I thought I did. What the freak? I wasn't paying attention, I'm guessing. Alright. There you go. Go on top of the mountain. That's what I'm trying to go to. Alright. You gotta hurry up. Um, where is it? Oh, so I tell. I'm going fast because why not? Alright. This is it. Koya can give you a lift. She's actually been following us this whole time. Over there. He's like, I see you! Hey, Oni Chan! I'm here! Wow, Hyman like, didn't notice at all. Why did she come to join us? Well, probably because she didn't want to get too close to humans. Or maybe just me. But right now, we need her power. I'm coming, Oni Chan! Whoa, you didn't even have to summon her! Yes, up there. Probably where Chime is. All right, let's go have a little talk with this to Paul. Oh yeah, can I fly as her? Oh yes, I could. Time to fly. Uh, I'm to get... Ooh. Oh my God, you can barely see her though. We look up. Yep, he's definitely up here. Is he up here? Where the hell is he? At least you made it to one, please. Uh -huh. Just as I thought. It might look like a regular hot air balloon from the outside, but up close, it's clearly been heavily remodeled. And sure enough, it only descended below the cloud line because the custom-built machinery malfunctioned. Can't tell what the issue is. I should be able to figure it out with DePaul's notebook. Thankfully, I know a little DIY from fixing up my guns when they're having issues. Mm -hmm. That should just about do it. Now all it needs is a nice hard kick. Uh, maybe that works on your guns, but he's so huh? fucking stupid. We're really You're correct. Are we actually moving? Oh, it looks like we are moving. Oh my goodness, are we back in the tribe or is this actually his layer? There it is, the workshop in the sky. Oh, you I gotta see, see it to believe it. What? This is what? Just the wings when he has tech like this. Well. According to the notebook, the platform beneath us runs on components from the Cinder City. Those can't be mass-produced. Also, I have some doubts about its mobility after seeing how it moved just now. For someone like T'Pol who dreams of flying freely, this definitely doesn't cut it. But if he's got that relic, he should be able to make a set of prototype wings for himself, right? Why bother making a whole flying workshop so he can mass-produce them? He had probably already built those prototype wings for himself. But this doesn't add up. If he's already achieved the power of flight, then he must have bigger dreams we don't know about. But what? With any luck, we'll find the answers in his workshop. Yeah. Now, let's be careful we're exploring this area too. And I bought him Malali and Kachina too. They're going like, Oh my god, what the sky, Malali? It is amazing! Yeah, but be careful, don't trip and fall. Okay, oh, you die. Hold up, can I actually do this? <laughs> Oh, I'm that book off. <laughs> Sorry! Is this a practice one for you to kill enemies, I'm guessing? What? Y'all yeah, see this? <gasps> Cuckoo Swords! Seems like the merchants were right. <laughs> yeah, you're free! You're free to go! Wait, did she just flew off? I actually wasn't seeing what she went off to. Huh. Guess we're gonna start going free from. You gotta fly. I'm gonna see some cinema just because I don't want to waste them too fast. Just gotta be careful. Alright. Let's get the cookie sword. What if I do this? Just kidding. I'm kidding. Why won't it fly away like the others? Is it? Hello? She's still breathing, but barely. By the looks of it, T'Pol was using these cages to extract phlogiston from the Kukasaurs. Once a Kukasaur is drained of phlogiston, it becomes too weak to move. 
We'll have to come back for these ones after dealing with Tapal. There's another notebook here. Am I gonna wear though? Let me see. Looks like a record of his phlogiston research. Log number 330. With the support of... I was finally able to launch the Airborne Workshop. Oh, okay, we see Even though it relies on the relic for 80% of its power supply, I've at least taken the first step. Whoa, Welcome sounds really a set. Holy Research fuck. The relic is progressing well. I should be able to replicate the technology and scale up production very soon. Has proposed a name for this groundbreaking invention. The Phlogiston Wings. I love how they I hide it down. Close. Soon, I will achieve my dream. I hope they've shown who, the, what they're saying really Log soon. Number 377. Encountered some issues with the new smaller model phlogiston wings. The gaseous phlogiston showed some volatility during the refinement process. Thinks we should proceed at a more cautious pace with the refinement experiments. But after so many past failures, I have to prove that I will succeed this time. Log number 114 ran an experiment using kookasaurs to refine gaseous phlogiston. It was a success. Motherfucker, dude, what? I've started recruiting merchants and hunters to capture wild kookasaurs. Log number 121. Major breakthrough in the efficiency of phlogiston yield. Huh? So many parts have been crossed out! This should be someone's name. Yeah, probably the contact he alluded to in his other notebook. Guess he has a benefactor. Um, did anyone else notice how the numbering system in this notebook suddenly changed halfway through? Yeah, and the tone seems to change a lot too. We haven't got time for textual analysis, I'm afraid. Grab the notebook and let's press on. Okay, uh, let's have your sister hold this thing, because I'm too lazy to hold shit anyways. Oh, mechanism I see, uh huh? Oh, what? Huh, never seen one of these before. Looks like this was built with the Cinder City components, too. Uh, you're not thinking of giving it a nice hard kick, are you? You know, I have Skylanders Giants. That's what it looks like to me. Like, what are we? Oh my god, this is how stars can be feeling, actually. We're in Skylanders Giants. This is a child character. Hold a second. Oh! For once? Are they actually giving her the right artifact for child characters? Like in the past, they didn't do that? Okay, anyways, we're gonna go. So. That's not king, that's just string bows. Okay, so how many bunnies are ways to fly, don't we? That is my guess. Can I just do this? Okay, that's one wing down. And Oh yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Whoa! What? What's that mechanism doing? It's asking for a nice hard kick where it hurts. Aim for the weak spot. Oh wait, I think I was meant to actually use my gun ability not to shoot it down, but you know what? I just did the exact opposite. Damn. Alright. Hmm. Enemies around here? What are they doing here? It's to Paul's henchmen. He must have brought them here using the relic and his prototype wounds. Watch out! I got it! Yeah, let's shoot him down! Bam, bam! Oh shit, man, look at this! Nah, -uh. I'm too strong, you motherfuckers! Stop yeah. bleeding a lot, like, oh, oh my god, bleeding all over the gun, shot up in my leg and my dick! Fuck your dick, hey, man! Okay, let's hope there's something useful in mission inside. The score tepper's not for info. Log number 403. Introduce me to some new comrades who fully support my ideas. I told them that some Saurians are blessed with wings, and some people with natural gifts, while the uh, less fortunate among us can only look I hate that word. <laughs> it's like the same game name, you know? But I also told them that progress can erase individual differences. Think of the tools humanity has made to fight back against wild beasts. The law we have put in place to even the playing field between the strong and the weak. I promised them that our research will be the new frontier of human progress. With our phlogiston wings, the power of flight will no longer be for a select few to enjoy. Imagine a world where the skies are for all to share. I only hope that when we finally achieve this goal, we'll be proud of me. Imagine a world where the skies are for all to share. 
Yes, what a wonderful world that would be. If only it were possible, we could respond faster. And so many tragedies could be prevented. But to Paul, what about the Saurians you're draining dry of phlogiston? You're not sharing the sky, you're stealing it. Bad move. I won't let you get away with it. Oh, love that, Jessica. Only Chad? I'm fine. Let's keep moving. I mean, what am I saying? Only Chad. Need we'll something. Anything else here? I'm trying to say only Chad. I need something. Thinking. Oh God, I was getting cold. My books are poking through my outfits. <laughs> you talking about me, please? Okay, are there any chests around here though? I don't see any. Unless I just skip, sir. I'm sorry, people. <gasps> oh my God, I see one underground there too. Okay, this is about flying again. That's what it looks like. Hold up, can I actually aim a bow from over here? Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I am close. Like, oh, what was that? What was that? Yeah. It's me! I'm saving you! Oh, hell yeah! But, oh, the weak though. That's not good. Save one. Get down. Boom. Yes, yeah, stay down with them. Stay down with them. Oh, what? Nah. Yeah. You think this is You're free! Dude. You're free! Look at you! Oh god, oh, oh my god! This is, this is so... I don't Let's know how to feel. Yeah, pose eloquently. Alright, then go down. I said go down! Okay. Huh? What? What was that? Oh shit, it's trying to shoot me! You're trying to kill me for a second? It's like he- Oh shit, hold on. That's what, what if I didn't save them? Oh, that would be so messed up. I I bet you there are people doing it right now who are not saving these guys. <laughs> My goodness, that'd be so fucked up if you ask me. Hmm. Okay, mechanism. Let's start with that. Yeah. Ooh, we got the dog chest right now though. You think it's around here by like saying, what is going on? My henchmen, they're dead! They're bleeding! What's going on? Do they say anything because Chaska is just smudging the hell out of them? Hold on, can I see if there's any chests around here? Doesn't look like it. And I need to go back up here for a second. Fly up, Chaska. Then go this way. Alright, now you just need to go this way. Alright, I'm just gonna touch this because why not? Looking into a big area. My guess is he's actually over here like a boss fight going on. It looks like it is. Or oh, I could be wrong about that. Looks like we've reached the center of the workshop. And still no sign of Koya's baby. Like, fuck, man, real is the baby. Let's search this area for now. If we still can't find Chime, we'll double back. Okay. You still have to begin your search. Good idea. Paimon found something! What is it? Did you find Chime? Not yet, but look! It's another one of T'Pol's notebooks! Just gonna give any clues on the child's whereabouts. Hmm. Alright. Now, you go on and weed. Log number 428. We decided to restart the experiments on phlogiston refinement. But without telling. I'm saying without saying bleh. This is the final obstacle to the success of the Phlogiston Wings project. We cannot fall at the last hurdle. Log number 436. Earlier today, suggested using Kukasaurs as an... That sound sounds creepy and I love it for that. Phlogiston. It's certainly feasible, but... Anyway, as long as our secret experiment succeeds... Secrets? Sure won't bring it up again. Log number 443. We will conduct the experiment tomorrow. But birthday is coming up, so hopefully we'll have a birthday surprise for her. It's a girl? Log number 444. <sighs> huh? Why is this log empty? The gone? I guess whoever wrote down the log number was prevented from recording the results. There's more. Let's keep reading. Really? Log number zero. We lost many comrades in the accident. 
Among them are friends, lovers, and children. But Dead. we cannot stop now. We will keep their legacy alive and carry their dreams forward. As of today, we are scrapping the artificial refinement method. Instead, we will focus all our efforts on phlogiston extraction from live kookasaurs. They are arrogant beasts whose existence in the wild serves no one but themselves. Their true worth lies in their sacrifice for the sake of human progress. To facilitate our operations, we will gradually move the airborne workshop closer to the Flower Feather Clan, even as we continue to expand it. All this we do to create a world where the skies are for all of humanity to share. All this we do to make T'Pol's dream a reality. Given the way this is written, not to mention the fact that the numbering has started over from zero, it kind of sounds like this is someone new. Does that mean that Paul's already- But in any case, who have been pursuing? There's also a letter tucked in the end of the notebook. It's from Puma. The fuck? Really, Puma? Puma! What's going Tomorrow. on? I don't know where you are right now, so I don't know how to reach you. My best bet is to send this letter to the Flower Feather Clan. Your father is gravely ill. Oh, I know we've had our differences in the past. But he is still your father. Won't you come and visit him? Please. I know you never liked him and cared even less for me. All you ever yearn for is the sky. And your birth mother. But we'll still be waiting here for you if you do come back. This may be the last chance you'll get to see your father. So Puma's not the Paul's real mom? Of course not. Well, she did say he never called her mom, but I might assume she was just venting. You could say that. We know that T'Pol's father passed away quite recently, and this letter looks recent. By contrast, the writing in this notebook is old and faded. It looks like the real reason T'Pol didn't attend his father's funeral is because he'd long since passed away himself. Hmm. Um... Then, the... the... Benefactor who found the workshop. If we ask ourselves why this letter was sent to the Flower Feather Clan, why T'Pol always yearned for the sky, and how he got his hands on a relic from the Cinder City, it all points to one answer. That's right. T'Pol was my child. He was born during my days as a wingless wanderer. His birth gave me new hope. I wanted to become the kind of mother who spent her days as a valiant rider, soaring the skies. Not an aimless, wingless nobody. But his father wanted to settle down. To give his child a safe, sheltered life in his tribe. We fought about it constantly. Until the love we once had for each other was gone. What a crazy ass plot twist. What the fuck? started a new family. With another traveler who was also looking to return home. And I went back to the Flower Feather Clan. Alone. Oh, I had no that idea that despite being raised among the children of Echoes, my child still harbored dreams of the skies. Can you imagine, Chaska? The joy and surprise I felt when he showed up at my door, asking to join the flying trials, or how proud I was when he said he wanted to prove his own worth rather than relying on my position as elder. And then the anguish that overcame me when he was rejected by the Kukasaurs and became wingless, just as I had after my injury. You've got a lot of nerve showing your face here. <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way, Chaska. I'm not here for a fight. I just want to talk. Isn't that your preferred way to resolve no, things? Suspicious. I trust you've learned to have T'Pol's wish on your way you like here. You like A world eyes, where the skies are for all of humanity to share. If only his I'm dream can be know. realized, no I'm one will ever know. have to lose their wings again. Our aerial prowess will be greater than ever before. War will never again come at such a this great a cost. The say. loss of Kuichi is a tragedy that need I'm never be repeated. Oh, you mentioned your name. So tell me, Chaska. 
Do you really wish to see the phlogiston wings forever grounded and gathering dust? Nothing you've said excuses all the conflict you've caused. You mean the argument back at the tribe? It was a necessary measure. Sometimes this is the only way to accelerate the pace of progress. <laughs> you motherfucker did what? Is a mother harming her children when she coaxes them into swallowing a bitter pill? Of course not. It is a brief moment of suffering for the greater good, and the child will come to understand this in due course. The phlogiston wings are that bitter pill. We will never progress different, as a though. tribe if we cling to the scraps the Kukasaurs offer us. Once the people have embraced the phlogiston wings, they will never look back. Even if they learn how the refined phlogiston is sourced, they will convince themselves that the sacrifice of a few Kukasaurs is a small price to pay for our dominion over the skies. But this I had not anticipated. I barely had the chance to introduce the phlogiston wings to the tribe before you found this place. Your plan was hardly foolproof. <laughs> Yet, it can still be salvaged. Chaska, traveler, you are the hope of humanity. I'm sure you have your doubts about my methods, but know that my love for humanity and for Natlan is genuine. You know me, Chaska. And you know that I've always treated everyone in the Flower Feather Clan as my own children. As fellow humans. Surely you can understand my perspective. You fucking wish. Alpa, Natlan doesn't belong to humans alone. And truthfully, neither do I. How many times has the Abyss invaded Natlan now? And yet, despite how much stronger it is than us, Natlan still stands as a nation of humans and Saurians. Peace imposed by force will crumble in a matter of days, because social bonds are what hold a civilization together. Weren't you the one that taught me that? And yet, you would break the bond we share with our Saurian companions to take more power for ourselves? That's as stupid as hacking your own arm off to use it as a club. They are wild beasts, driven purely by instinct. How could they possibly understand human social bonds? Ugh, how did someone like her ever become a writer? <sighs> because clearly she had them full too. <laughs> you overestimate them. They bow to the strong and shun the weak. That's all there is to it. They never gave Tepal a second glance when he was at his lowest. Nor me when I returned injured from the Cinder City. It's all about survival of the fittest for them. Plain and simple. They obeyed me once I proved myself stronger than them. But the moment it serves them better, they'll abandon me in a heartbeat. You're wrong, Alpa. They only reject the wingless because they don't want to fly anyone to their death. Hmm. Jaska, I will promise you this. Only the unruliest wild kukasaurs will be used for phlogiston extraction. The ones who have nothing else to offer to humanity. Well, that's too bad. Because I know a few unruly wild kukasaurs who don't think that idea is going to fly. Namely my mom, my sister, and me. And the others? To us, they're friends, family, even children. So if you want to put any of them in one of your cages, you're gonna have to go through us. Is that right? I knew you might be difficult to convince. Maybe this will change your mind. Oh, what? The baby. You just, was it Gigi? I mean, I've been talking to you for like two weeks now, and this motherfucker is just, just uh... Ah, of course. Oh, Paimon. Are this? Are you just gonna Careful. kill her? Don't make any rash decisions. Unless you want to see her suffer. <laughs> oh no! That's one of the extraction cages! I told my subordinates to take control of the tribe while I was away. Luckily for them, our strongest warrior and our most powerful ally aren't there to stop it. Take control? What are you 
you planning to do with Mutota and his supporters? Merely accelerate their inevitable downfall. They cannot stand in the way of progress forever. It is not the move I wish to make. But I'm afraid you and your friends force my hand. And since you insist on imposing me too, I have no choice but to keep you here until the dust has settled. So that's what you meant by I just want to talk. You never intended to negotiate. You just wanted to stall us. No, Chaska. I genuinely hoped I could win you over. You are the strongest warriors that we have. Put down your weapons, and I promise you that no harm will come to this young Sarian. I just need you to stay here for the next couple of weeks or so. What? While my people consolidate their power. Then, I will give her back to you, and you will be free to leave. You really think my week up is gonna let you get away with that shit? As long as the majority supports our vision, even the Pyro Archon cannot meddle in our internal affairs. Your vision is deranged. And the Flower Feather Clan will never support it. You sure about that? Then wait here and see. Time will tell. What do we do? Even if the whole tribe fights back, Mutota's in grave danger! Stop delaying the inevitable! Drop your weapons and get into the cages! Now! Uh, she's still holding Chimei hostage. Is there really no other way? <sighs> She's thinking. I'm sorry, child. I'm not listening. Unmotherly. Do it, mom. I don't want to meet up. What kind of job make me? Koya. Huh? What are you yapping about? Stand down. Drop your weapons now. This instant. That was a super kick her face right there for them. For mine, she tackled for me. No, the relic. So, oh, shit! Let's go. Ooh, destruction! Wait, oh, I guess I'm doing this now. Lord, help us! Burn you away! I'm gonna burn the fuck up. You got two husbands? How the hell did you bring him over here? That makes no absolute sense. Oh, you're not on the ground. That's nice. <laughs> Break them up! And then... Okay, I'm just gonna... Yeah, beautiful! Yeah, I don't give a shit. Yeah, what about the bullet? Wait, what about her? Oh, never mind. My kneecaps! Uh oh. Things are burning down. No! What is she doing? She'll bring us all down with her! But why? We stabilized the relic! <sighs> Maybe it got damaged in the fight. If we don't think of something fast, this whole workshop is gonna fall apart. No. <gasps> They're directly beneath us. My beloved tribe! Okay, you deal with the relic. The whole place will come crashing down! Okay. Go, Chaska! You gotta do it again? It's too powerful! This ain't a toy like last time! I don't think I can just throw it aside! But, but we need to get it far away before it explodes! Then the tribe will be safe, and so will this workshop! Koya, remember when we were kids? Come on, let's take this thing high up into the sky! Don't worry! I know I can get rid of it before it explodes. We're tucking some surface wounds at most. All I need is for you to catch me at the end. Just like old times. Okay, just going to say so. I can't hold it back anymore. We have to go. Uh-oh. Don't be insane. I attacked just from behind while the birds is going well. What? Alpha, what are you? She just closed her little back side? You're a fool, Jessica. Why would you choose such a risky solution? We cannot entrust the safety of our tribe to this wild Saurian. <laughs> I'm the fool. You really think you can stand a better chance than me? <laughs> sure, it may 
may be asking too much for an ex-wingless to escape the blast radius in time, but I can fly it a safe distance away. Even if it's the last thing I do. This is becoming drama. What the fuck is happening? Am I just gonna sit and watch? Okay, I guess it is. Here. This should be high enough to save the clan. Okay, yep, here we go. You don't get to die a hero today. Sis, you're a fucking villain! Yeah, let's go. Hey, look at that. Oh, look at the glow. Can you catch in time for explodes? What? No, Koichi just sacrificed herself. Okay, she's. Oh, some bruises. Okay, no, that's better than nothing. She's still alive. And my little sister lived! The being cutscenes more smoothly. What the hell is Genshin thinking? I mean, it's only sometimes they do this. I actually like that. Koya, are you hurt? Let me take a look at you. It's like, oh, I'm fine. I'm My spine fine. is a little damaged. What do you mean, I'm fine? Didn't I tell you to catch me on your back? Why did you try to shield me from the blast? Because, yes! Accident? Yeah, right. Seriously, you're as stubborn as ever. Chaska, Koya! <laughs> How are things looking here? All it took was a little DIY. Well, I damage. think that's putting it mildly. I owe you one. Again. <coughs> My daughter. Is he yes, okay? Oh, but be honest. Do you still think Kukasaurus can't form bonds? <sighs> Mom, I'll figure out the refinement problem. I'll find a way. You don't need to worry about it. I just need some more time. That's all I ask. Please just trust me. Just this once. <laughs> Hello, my sweet eye! The Flower Feather Clan yield to the strong. And it's up to the winners to define what strength means. So it looks like it's my turn to yield. <laughs> Koya! Is he down? Oh, exhaustions, I'm guessing. So, you're absolutely sure it's not because of the explosion? Yes, for the 10,000th time, I'm sure. But the blast barely touched her. The reason she fainted was old injuries playing up, compounded by overexertion in recent days. The moment she finally relaxed, all the built up stress finally caught up with her. And no wonder. Honestly, she's just like you. Anyway, now you know how we feel when you go off risking life and limb. Your mother and I would both appreciate it if you lived less dangerously. You know she wrote to me from the Masters of the Nightwind just to scold me for not doing enough to keep an eye on you if she wasn't so busy with work. You can bet she'd come back here and chew us both out in person. I'll find an opportunity to apologize to her. I promise. You'd better. No more avoiding us, okay? And don't get me started on all the checkups you've missed. Got it. Got it. Huh? Koya, you're awake. I'll... I'll go let everyone know. Hey! But we're not done talking! Fuck you, Dad! What are we gonna do with her, hmm? Even after everything that's happened, she still hasn't figured out how to start the conversation with you. She keeps saying, I don't think Koya has forgiven me yet. But if you ask me, she's the one who's scared to open up and have an honest conversation. For all her confidence, she's a very sensitive soul underneath. 
You'd think as a peacemaker, she of all people would know how to reconcile with her family after a falling out. She must have been a handful growing up. Thank you for being there for her. And of course, thank you for keeping her safe when you were up there in the sky. Koya, Uncle Kuzco, we're here! What were you talking about just now? Ha! I was just telling her that she's not to go chasing danger with Chaska ever again. Cusco, I understand how you must feel. But it's all thanks to Koya and Chaska's efforts that the Airborne Workshop didn't come crashing down on our heads. Oh, Paimon almost forgot to ask. They didn't hurt you while we were gone, did they? Thankfully, when her co-conspirators tried to arrest me, I was out coaching Koya and Junan. The two of them were a huge help. They took care of things while I went around rallying the Resistance. So, in the end, Alpa's would-be revolt didn't really get off the ground. And as it turns out, not all of the wingless want to see our dear Saurian friends replaced with phlogist and power gizmos. I'm so sorry you got mixed up in this, by the way. We should have caught on to Alpa's scheme sooner. We could have saved so many Kukasaurs from getting hurt. It's like you're not one. Most of the airborne workshop has now been dismantled. We've just left one small, harmless part intact, and repurposed it as a jail for Alpa and her cronies. Let's see how they like being locked up in a sky prison! Time they got to taste of their own medicine. So, it looks like there's just one last conflict left to resolve. Peacemaker, you're up. I said I had to wait until things had blown over, didn't I? And now they have. But I still have no idea what to say, Koya. I just want to say, I'm sorry for how things went down back then. There's nothing to be sorry about! Here when I saw Rogue Robin from New Boys and the Fine Friends. And I can lose what you just see among the humans. Huh? Does this mean you're, you're not mad at me anymore? Fuck no! That's right! Where's that family likeness coming to again? I'm on sit the fuck up. But that day when we ran into each other, Oh, I, mean, I was thinking with the bomb. I thought you were the accomplice. Huh? So then, when did you finally make your peace with him? No. Hey, slow down, little boy. Oh, it's Chimi and Chipu. They're here too. Mom, are you okay? Mom is fine, love. We're all doing well. I'm still a little bleeding, you know. <laughs> Like, how do you make kiss, by the way? I fuck a, I fuck a man version? What? It was the daddy. Um, anyways, I guess I was... It was when it was my tender person who fell of my own. Is this the end of Act 3 or something? Ah, oh, horse. No, that was a wholesome ending. Poised Act 3. No, that was awesome towards the end, you know? You're telling me my walk past this area is actually these two living here now? Oh, that's nice. Oh, well, I'm gonna go. Like, subscribe, I'll see you later. Sorry, you know. Uh